Hello there, THP 494 and 598. We just finished talking about how great and awesome lists are. So now let's start to just like add a new thing to our brain, right? Let's turn our gears here just a little bit. Let's scoot in another direction and let's talk about dictionaries. So dictionaries are similar to lists, but unlike lists, which don't have a specified length, right? We can make lists that are any length that we want. Dictionaries also always exist in key pairs. So dictionaries always uh, kind of have entries that are matching one for one items. And we can think of how storage works, right? Storage has a key and a value that's associated with it. And dictionaries are similar to that as we start to think about how they work. So with that in mind, we might imagine, right, that in our case, we might have a table and starting to pull apart, okay, well, what's this good for and how does it work? Let's again go back to our idea of how a table uh, works. So let's imagine that we have several different states that we want to work with. So let's go ahead and take this table and edit this. And we could imagine that this table has multiple states that are involved in it. Uh, we might have brightness. hue, opacity, and black level. And then we might have values that are associated with each one of these, right? We could imagine 1, 0, uh, 1, 1. And then we could uh, quickly see how we might have multiple states that we want to move between. So we state 2, 3, and our values here would be different. And in fact, what we should probably do is we should probably think of these as floats. Although we can always convert them to floats in the process. So here we might have 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1. And again, even another set of values, it's maybe uh, 1.25, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.8 and 1. Excellent. So we could, it's not inconceivable to think of how we might build a system to switch between uh, these different tables as states, but we could also think about how we could then store these or put these inside of storage, right? And a way that we could start to think about how we hold on to complex arrangements of ideas uh, in something that's a little faster to get access to. Okay, so what does that mean and what does that even look like? Well, again, dictionaries, unlike lists, are uh, a system of keys, or the, well, they are a key value pair. That's a great way to, to say it, right? So we might imagine that they look just like this. I ask for brightness and I get one back. I ask for hue and I get 0 0.1 back, right? That's a way that we can start to think about how dictionaries work. Well, how can we take advantage of that? What, we, what might we do to uh, go ahead and build something that uses dictionaries in some interesting way for us? So let's go ahead and put some stuff into storage in a dictionary, and then we can start to understand well, what that means. And in fact, before we even do that, let's just build a dictionary. Uh, so here, we're going to go ahead and create a new dictionary. Uh, we'll call it um, first, uh, we'll call it Webster. So Webster here is going to be equal to um, our curly brackets, right? So that's Webster. And uh, let's go ahead and add some things to Webster. So to do that, we're going to say Webster. And we're going to use square brackets to indicate a key. So inside of our key here, uh, we're going to go ahead and use a string as a locator. So we might say the first thing is apple. Great. And apple is equal to a value of one point. Oh, sure. Why not 10 point? Zero. Great. Then we might also want to add another thing to Webster. We might add um, cheese to Webster. And cheese is going to be equal to 5. And last but not least, let's go ahead and print Webster. Let's print out this dic dictionary that we're adding things to. So there we can see that our curly brackets exist, and we can see cheese colon 5, apple colon 10. Now, if we were to um, say print out from Webster, so from Webster, I'd like to retrieve apple. Well, 
we can run that script and there we get Apple. Now this is excellent because this isn't uh, this doesn't limit us uh, or tie us to an index, right? So unlike a list, and we can look back over here at our list, where in evaluating our list, the index really matters, right? The position in the list gives us different items. Our dictionary doesn't require an index. Our dictionary is a series of keys and paired values. So it doesn't matter if I ask for apple or cheese. All that matters is that I provide the key that is then going to give me a value that returns. We can also nest dictionaries inside of dictionaries. Hold on to that thought because that um, gives us some really powerful options. Okay, so how can we take advantage of this? What might we do to really think about what this means? Okay, let's add another text at and start to think about how we might add a for loop to then put the values of our different states into storage. And we're going to add another examine dot here. And we're going to do the same thing dot dot. And just real quick, we're going to go ahead and we're going to unstore everything for a hot second. Don't worry, we'll come back and fix you. So this way we can actually just see what's going into storage here. Okay. So let's start to dive into this for loop. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and call ref. I'm going to use ref uh, to be a stand-in for our operator over here. So we're going to use this uh, variable. We're going to define it as the operator that's state1. And now I'm going to go ahead and build an empty dictionary. So state is just an empty dictionary. Now we're going to uh, start our for loop here. So for i in the range of ref dot num rows. Again, right, I'm thinking about the number of rows in here for as the number of times I want to iterate through this particular loop. And then I want to start by saying that state uh, right, so this is going to be uh, the dictionary that I want to put things into, square brackets. First I've got to do, I've got to find the key that I want to use. So I want to use uh, this column as a key. So I'm going to make a string out of uh, ref and the thing that's in the position, the row position i, the column position 0. Now let's go ahead and put a little more space in here so we can kind of see that a little bit. Right, so that means that the first time through brightness is my first key, and then that's going to correspond to equals to a float value that's going to be again ref. Right, again my operator state one uh, ref again i as the row position, and this time one as the column position. Excellent. And then at the end of all of this, I'm going to put that whole dictionary me.parent dot store into uh, storage. And I'm going to call it state one. Right, we're going to match it with the actual name here of our table, state one. And what I want to put into, dic into storage is state, this dictionary that I've gone ahead and added a bunch of stuff to. All right, so let's go ahead and run our script here and see what we end up with. Probably an error, but who knows? Ha ha! Excellent. Uh, me dot parent dot store. Great. What did I get wrong? store and what I forgot was I forgot my last little closing parenthesis here. We'll see if I forgot anything else. I did. Good. I love it when I forget things. It proves that I am human. All right, so line eight. Line eight in module. No. Ah, of course, and I forgot my parentheses here. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Third time's a charm. Ah, bada bing, bada boom. There we go. All right, so state one has got hue, opacity, brightness, and black level uh, stored as keys. So we might think again that, okay, well, what about state two, right? This table down here. So I'm going to 
make sure that state2 is the operator that I look at. I'm going to use state2 as a value that I go ahead and use to stick into storage. And let's run that. All right, now we've put this whole thing into storage over here. And we could even do that for our third table. And let's run this one last time. And there, now we've put all three of the values of these tables here into storage. So we could, in fact, even delete these, right? We could get rid of those all together. And in fact, we might think about, again, a situation where we have a number of sliders, where we're positioning those sliders and then recording those values into our storage, right? Like we might think about how we might want to build a queuing system that way, or how we want to uh, build a save state system to recall various things that way. These are all ways that we could start to think about, well, how do we actually use storage to extract these things? Okay, well, that's great, Matt, but how do we actually get things out of here? Well, we can start to think about how we pull things out of here, right, with an evaluate. So I might have an eval here, and we could write a simple little expression, again, me.fetch. So I'm going to fetch from this state1. So I'm going to go ahead and start by saying that I want to look at the dictionary called state1. And then in square brackets, inside of this dictionary state1, I want to look for a particular key. So I want to look for the key hue. Excellent. And we can see that hue is zero. That looks like that matches. That's great. How could I build that in a way that's uh, a little more interesting for me, right? So maybe what I have is I have a table, and I could think about how I might write that expression a little more abstractly. So again, me.fetch, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look for state, and this time I'm going to put in uh, a dollar sign because that's an easy thing for me to think about how I might substitute. Right, and in this case, I want to look for hue. Great. Now we're going to use a substitute dot, and I'm going to specify that dollar sign is what I want to substitute, and in its place, I want to stick one. And let's use an eval dot, and let's plug that in here. And now we can see that I can change the number here one, two, three. And that blasts me through all of the values here inside of my dictionary. So now I've got a great way to start to think about how do I pull out all of those things, right? So I could even think about, uh, instead of building a simple table like this, like let's edit this table. And let's go ahead and make this a little more complicated. All right, so we'll copy, paste, paste, paste. We've got four of those. So again, our keys would be brightness hue, opacity, and black level. And again, this dollar sign is what we're going to actually end up substituting in, right? Excellent. So now all we have to do is change this single value here. And this lets us, oops, not 11. 11 doesn't exist. This lets us blast through all of the different things that are in storage for us. Right, so again, how this is a way of thinking about how do we then extract things that we've put into a saved state somewhere. Um, and in our case, how do we extract them from a saved state that isn't a table? So that's a little bit about dictionaries, a little, about, a little bit about lists. Right, those can be really useful and helpful ways that we can store information and hold on to things. Let me go ahead and run this script one more time. So that's still in storage. Excellent. All right. So all of that said and done, now we're going to take a step back. We're going to revisit again, replicating and instancing, because I know that's a complex kind of idea. And I want to really kind of drill home what the differences are between those two things and why we use those two in the different ways that we do. All right. Hang on to your socks, everybody, because it's going to be a wild ride.